Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. This video is my full setup guide for CMU Emulator version 1.13.1. .1. So before we can start this guide, there are a few things you are going to need to install in order to get CMU Emulator working on your computer. You are going to need to make sure that you have a C++ Redistributable 2017 installed. You're going to need to make sure that your graphics card supports at least OpenGL 4.1, though 4.6 is advised, and you are also going to need to make sure that all of your drivers on your computer are completely up to date. Once you're happy that all of these requirements and settings have been met, let's get this guide started. The first thing you're going to want to do is to download your CMU version, CMU hook, these are the experimental graphics packs for 1.13.1 .1, and these graphics packs right here next to them are the legacy graphics packs that will also work with this CMU version. So once you have all these downloaded, you're also going to need some shader caches for your games. If you have a previous CMU version, you can find your shader caches in this shader cache folder. You can see I'm using 1.13.0. You can find your shader caches in the shader cache transferable folder. We'll be transferring these a little bit later in the video. If you don't have a shader cache for your particular game, you can simply build one yourself by just playing the game, pretty much that's all you have to do. Or alternatively, you can download a shader cache from the shader cache reddit, a link for that will be provided in the description of this video. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to extract our CMU version to a folder of its own. I'm going to use 7-zip and extract it to CMU 1.13.1. .1. Now that this is extracted, I'm simply going to open it, bring it to the center of my screen and I'm now going to drag and drop my CMU hook down here. Once this zip file is here, simply right click it and using 7-zip extract it here. Once these files are extracted, you can move this zip file back to your desktop or you can delete it if you want to. Next, we want to get the graphics packs for use with CMU itself. Open up your graphics pack folder and all you want to do is drag and drop this graphics pack zip file down here, right click it and using 7-zip click extract here. And there you go, you now have all of these experimental graphics packs. Next, we want to grab the legacy graphics packs, also a drag and drop these into this folder. Once again, right click them and using 7-zip extract them here. Now, it is going to ask you to replace some files if you have followed the order of installation. Simply click yes and you now need to wait for this process to finish. And there we go, we now have all of the currently available graphics packs for use with CMU 1.13.1. The next thing we are going to want to do is actually set some compatibility settings for CMU itself. Simply right click the CMU EXE, come to this compatibility tab and you need to make sure that you are running this program as administrator, disabling full screen optimizations and change high DPI settings on Windows 10. Make sure to have both of these options set, making sure that you have this set to scale by application. Once you have all of these settings changed, simply click OK. Click apply and we are now done with CMU compatibility. Next up, I'm going to show you exactly how you can transfer any files that may be required from your previous CMU version if you have one. I'm simply going to open up my CMU 1.13.0 folder. Now, if you were on a very recent version of CMU emulator, for example, if you were on CMU 1.12.0 or newer, all you need to do is right click and copy your CMU exe and then paste it across into your current CMU directory. This will replace your cmu.exe. As you can see, when I launch CMU Emulator itself, it is going to be CMU version 1.13.1c. And there you go, you can indeed see that my version has been updated. You are also going to need to make sure that you have the latest version of CMU Hook. You are going to need to transfer this dbghelp.dll and keystone.dll file, simply highlight the two of them, and as before, simply select copy and paste them into your previous CMU directory. Now that you have fully updated CMU and CMU hook, you should be ready to start playing your games. In the event that you are using a much older version of CMU than 1.12.0, I am now going to show you what files you will need to transfer from your old CMU folder into this new CMU folder right here. The files that you are going to need from your old CMU folder are your MLC01 file. You're going to need your OTP and CPROM.bin files in the event that you use online mode for CMU emulator and if you have them you're also going to want to transfer your settings.bin and your settings.xml file. If you are missing either of these settings files, do not worry, CMU will automatically make one if you are missing it. 
all you now need to do is right click into your new folder and paste all of this data across. Please be aware that depending on how many updates, DLCs and save files you have in your old CMU version, this process can take quite a large amount of time as you can see I am transferring about 24GB of data to my new CMU folder. Once you have done this however, you will have successfully transferred over all of your game updates, game DLCs and game save files for all of your games on CMU emulator. Please be patient as this process can take quite a large amount of time. And there we go, all of my files have now been successfully transferred over from my old CMU build into my new one. At this point in time, you are either going to continue to use this folder if you transferred over, or you can use your new CMU folder as I have shown you if you are updating from a very old version of CMU. For the remainder of this guide, I am going to be showing you how you can set up absolutely every single setting. This will make sure that you set up everything 100% perfect, and I'm also going to be showing you some of the new stuff that is available in 1.13.1. All we need to do now is launch CMU EXE for the very first time. And there we go, there is CMU Emulator launched for the first time. As you can see I'm using 1.13.1c, if there is a newer version available do not worry everything you see in this guide will still apply. Next what we want to do is download the shared fonts that are given to us by the use of CMU Hook. All you need to do is click this download now button and these shared fonts will download. If you are having any issues with these shared fonts downloading, all you will need to do is add CMU itself as an exception in your antivirus or you can turn off Windows Defender while you install them. Now at this point of the video you are probably wondering how do I get my games for CMU itself. In the description of this video you will find my getting games guide, that video will show you exactly how to get all of your games. Please pay attention not only to the guide itself, but look at the pinned comment in that video, it will show you a workaround to get that application working 100%. That video will show you how to get your games list also set up, the next thing we're going to do in this guide is set up our inputs for our controllers. Simply come to options, input settings and we are going to be mapping to the Wii U gamepad. Since I'm going to be using X input, I select X input and select my controller from this drop down window right here. I'm now simply going to set up all of my input maps for my own controller. If you do not have a controller and wish to use mouse and keyboard, you can find my mouse and keyboard guide linked in a guide of its own down in the description of this video. For this blow mic setting I simply set it to the F key on my keyboard and I generally leave this show screen input unmapped. I'm also going to be setting my dead zones to a value of 11%. I do this as it makes my controller inputs feel much much better for my thumbsticks. If you have a supported controller with rumble you can also change the different values here. Once you have this done you are going to need to apply a profile name to this controller. I'm simply going to call this controller1 and once I have inputted a name you need to hit this save button. Once you have saved your profile you should see it appear in this drop down window to be loadable at any time you need to use it. You can also hit this button right here to make sure that your controller is connected. Please be aware that if you are going to be playing any multiplayer games on CMU emulator you need to map your first controller to the Wii U gamepad and then any additional controllers need to be mapped for the Wii U Pro controller. This is exactly what you need to do for any of those multiplayer games. Once you are happy with all of your input bindings, simply click the X button and we are now done. Next up I'm going to show you some of the settings that I myself use for CMU itself. Come to options and when we come to GPU buffer cache accuracy you can see that I am using low and fast. Coming to this general settings tab you can see I'm using the default language with nothing changed here. Coming to the graphics tab you can see I'm using full sync at GX2 draw done, this is important. I'm using vsync and I'm also using separable shaders. Coming across to the audio tab you can see that I am now using the new audio API X Audio 2. You can use direct sound but for several games like Bayonetta 2 or Pokken Tournament you are going to want to use X Audio. Coming across to the online tab this is where you can enable your account for use in online mode. As you can see my profile is right here. Once you have copied all of the settings I have shown in this tab simply close it and we are now done. Next I'm going to come to the debug tab and you can see I have turned on bilinear downscale. You want to have this set to on and you also want to set a custom timer of QPC. Simply click QPC, come back to debug and then come to MM timer accuracy and set this to 1 millisecond. These two settings are quite important for loading times in CMU emulator. 
Next, you want to come to Options, Experimental, and make sure you are using Use RDTSC. This setting is also very important for getting fast load times in CMU itself. For all of your specific games, each and every one of them generally has an optimized game profile. Next, I'm just going to show you my optimized game profile for Breath of the Wild. As you can see, when you right click a game, you get access to all of these different options. You can look at the save directory, update directory or your DLC directory. For now, let's open this game's game profile. These are the optimized settings that you are going to be needing to apply for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This setting especially here will help with excessive RAM usage especially for Nvidia GPU users. You are also potentially going to need to change this CPU mode away from Triple Core Recompiler. You can see the correct CPU mode to use for your selected CPU displayed on screen right now. Once you have made any changes to this file, go to File, Save and then you can close the tab. Next up I'm going to show you how you can turn on your graphics packs. All you need to do is come to Options, Graphics Packs and as you can see these are the graphics packs we previously added. You are not going to want to use these graphics packs right here, you are instead going to want to use 113.0 Legacy. Open this graphics tab and you are going to want to click on Resolution. Tick this box in order to turn it on and then select whichever resolution you wish to use. I'm just going to use 1920x1080. I'm also going to select Shadow Resolution and when you come across to these different presets you can see that we have lots, I'm just going to use this medium preset of 1x for now. Next, I'm going to come to the old graphics packs that we would previously use for older versions. Simply click Old Graphics Packs and then scroll down until you can find the graphics packs you're looking for. For Breath of the Wild I use FPS++, LWZX Crash Workaround and since I have an Nvidia GPU I use these two Nvidia packs. All GPU users should use this Kakariko Torch Shadow Fix and if you have an AMD GPU you're going to want to use these two AMD graphics packs right here. Once you have all of your graphics packs selected, you can simply click the X in the top right hand corner and we are now done. The next thing we're going to do is load into game for the very first time and I'm going to show you exactly how your game will perform if you are not using a shader cache file. And here we are now loaded into game and as you can see when we pan our camera or move our character around in gameplay, our game is going to seem like it is freezing and stopping all of the time. All that this is, is your game building its shader cache. This is completely normal and to be expected when you are not using a shader cache. All that you need to do to fix this is continue to play the game and your shader cache will be built and your game will eventually stop stuttering like this. For example, when I use a bomb for the very first time, throw it and explode it, you can see that my game gets massive slowdown the very first time that I do it. Let's just wait for my bomb cooldown to reset and once again when I use the bomb the second time I will get much less lag than I got the first time. So as I said all you need to do is continue to play the game and this stutter and lag will disappear eventually. Now that I've played around for a small amount of time in this great plateau area I'm now going to close CMU emulator, reopen my CMU folder and relaunch the emulator again. You will see that when I launch Breath of the Wild once again, this time I'm going to load a shader cache that I have now built for my game. If you want to have the best possible performance in your games on CMU emulator, it is generally advised that you do this and build your shader caches yourself. If you have an older CMU folder and have already built several pre-compiled shader caches, you can indeed transfer them to your newer version of CMU. Let's do that right now. So all that you need to do to transfer your previously built pre-compiled shader caches is open your old CMU folder, come to this shader cache folder, transferable folder and these are the shader cache files you are going to want to transfer. Simply highlight them, copy them and then come to your new shader cache folder inside of your 1.13.1 folder, transferable and once again paste these shader caches right here. Replace any files and you have now transferred all of your shader caches for all of your games. As you will see, when I come back here, reload CMU and launch my game once again, except this time you are going to see that I am going to be using my fully built shader cache for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. As I previously stated, you can also download your shader caches from the internet, although for performance that is generally not advised. 
you will also see that the very first time that you compile your shader cache for your game on a new version of CMU, it is going to take quite a large amount of time to load through this compilation stage. Do not worry however, this is completely normal behaviour. Now that I've shown you all of the optimised settings for CMU, how to get your shader caches and how to properly use them, I'm now going to show you some optimised CPU and GPU settings for use with CMU that can significantly boost your performance in your games on this emulator. For NVIDIA users, all you need to do is right click on your desktop and click NVIDIA control panel. Once this window opens, you want to come to this option for adjust image settings. Once in this pane, you need to make sure to use the advanced 3D image settings. Once you click this, click apply and then you want to come to this manage 3D settings right here. Next, you want to come to program settings and you now need to add CMU as an application in this area. If it does not appear in this drop down window, you are going to need to hit this add button right here. And if it doesn't appear in this window here, you're going to need to click this browse button in order to add it from its exe itself. My CMU folder is on my desktop, here's my CMU 1.13.1 folder, simply select your CMU.exe and click open. This will add the emulator's application to these manage 3D settings. Next, we're going to change some of these settings. You're going to want to set anisotropic filtering to off, Scroll down a little further and you're going to want to set maximum pre-rendered frames to 1. Scrolling down further again, you're going to want to set OpenGL rendering a GPU to your actual GPU, in my case my 980 Ti. Some people change this compute performance setting to on but I generally leave it at off. Leave shader cache set to on and set power mode to prefer maximum performance. Scrolling down a little further, you are going to be turning on this threaded optimization setting. Please be aware that if your CPU has very limited core amounts, you may need to set this setting to off in order to have better performance. The last setting we are going to change is setting triple buffering to on, and if you are having any problems with screen tearing in your games on CMU emulator, you may need to set this VSync option to on or adaptive. I don't get screen tearing, so I'm not going to turn it on. Once you have all of these settings set, simply click this apply button and you are now done with your NVIDIA control panel. Once you are happy that all of your settings are completely changed and completely applied, you can simply click the X button in the top right hand corner and we are done. Let's now take a look at some optimised AMD settings for AMD GPU users. Basically all that you need to do for your AMD graphics profile is copy all of the settings you see on screen right now. The most important settings in this window I would say are OpenGL triple buffering and your shader cache being set to either on or AMD optimised. Once you are happy that all of your settings are correct, you can simply save this and close your AMD Radeon settings profile. Next up I'm going to show you some CPU optimizations and some power settings you can change to boost your performance in games. All you need to do is right click your windows icon, come to power settings and once in this window you want to come to additional power settings. You need to make sure that your PC or laptop is using high performance power mode, additionally you can come to change power settings, advanced power settings and once you are in this window you want to scroll down until you see processor power management. You want to click on this and make sure that your minimum processor state and your maximum processor state are both set to 100%. Once you are happy that these are both set to 100% simply click ok or click apply and you are now done with these power setting options. You can now close all of these windows since we are now done with power management. And there we go guys, you have now set up all of the optimized settings for CMU emulator itself, for your AMD and Nvidia GPUs and also correctly set up your power plans in order to give you the best possible performance using your CPU. I also have several other guides that can also help you to boost your performance, for example if you experience any stutter when using a full shader cache with an Nvidia GPU, I would highly advise that you follow my shader performance guide that will 100% boost your performance and give you a much much smoother gameplay in all of your games on CMU emulator. In the description of this video you will find a host of guides that will help you with any possible issues you could have on CMU itself. Once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, if you want to consider supporting me and my YouTube channel you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description of this video and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.